What's going on, guys? Swag, you're back. Repping the Colts merch on campus. I'm from Connecticut, which is kind of crazy. I became a Colts fan in 2005, the first time that I ever watched football, and they won the Super Bowl a year later, which is crazy. Big Reggie Wayne fan. But, yeah, let's let's get into the video. So this game was certainly not how I expected it. I thought the Bills would put up a lot of points. I certainly thought the Colts had a chance, but, I mean, 41 to 15 – the Bills had been struggling, though. They lost to the Jags, right? And then they were in a, basically a tie game at half against the Jets, and then they blew them out in the second half. But the Bills really haven't played that great of football, and the Colts are just a game behind them for the playoffs. The Steelers are ahead of the Colts, but there's a legit chance at the wild card for this Indianapolis Colts team. Uh, I think the division is kind of out of the question. I mean, the Titans did look absolutely horrendous against the Texans and lost that game, but they're what, eight and three now. So the division is out of the question. Let's be real here. But the wild wild card is is in play. And that's something that I do want to talk about. And you look at the standing. So right now, the Chargers and Bills are six and four. So are the Bengals. The Colts are six and five. So they're a game out of being the fifth seat. Think about that for a second. The Colts just have they've not been good this year. They beat bad teams. They've lost to good teams. In the first half of those good teams, though, they had played well. And also, they've been in close games, too. Like, they should have beat the Titans. They should have beat the Ravens. That's two right there. And that, what would that be, like seven in a row or something? Like, the Colts are, they're a good team. They really are. I'm concerned with the play calling, which looked great. That's that's why they won. And they forced turnovers as well. But Frank Reich called a hell of a game. And that's the Frank Reich we need to see every single week. Mixing up the run, mixing up the pass. I mean, the Colts... Their first drive of the game, the past like five, six, seven weeks has been great. All touchdowns and a field goal. Now they go out against the Bills and they have a great drive and it ends with a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. We need to see that continue. We need to see Frank Wright to switch it up between Carson Wentz and Jonathan Taylor. Because now that, now that we have a legit run game, because the past couple of years, like we, we did have Marlon Mack and then he got injured and... But, like, other than that, man, like, we, we really never really had a run game like this. So, I mean, great offensive line. It, it, it is has been banged up. We know that Quentin Nelson got hurt. I don't recall if he came back into the game or not, but I saw him on the sideline. He looked to be okay. I mean, this Colts O-line at full strength is top three in football. You can make the debate it's number one. Now you've got Jonathan Taylor. You can mix in Naeem Hines to ch change the pace. And then Marlon Mack at this point, it's not even he's not even active, which is really unfortunate because before that injury – he was such a good downhill runner. I mean, uh, Marlon Mack was a stud. Even a healthy Marlon Mack, though, is no, is just not, he's not the talent of Jonathan Taylor. I mean, we've got our, a superstar on our hands, and that, that was a video that I made on my Colts channel like a month ago. I'm probably going to put this on my main channel. I probably will put it on both, actually, but I haven't talked to you guys in like weeks, it feels like, about this Colts team, and now's the perfect time to do so because. If the Colts had lost against the Bills, we we just it would not have been good today, man. We would not have a lot of good things to say, even if it was like a one point loss. I mean, the Colt like we have to remember the Colts' schedule coming up is is very difficult. I mean, the Buccaneers at home, the Houston Texans, who yeah, they're the Houston Texans, but they're a division team. They're going to play hard. We should take care of that game. And then the Patriots, who are seven and four, is that game in Gillette Stadium? Uh, I don't, I can't check, but uh, Colts, Cardinals, Raiders, who are, they're a 500 team. They got up to a great start lately. They just, they're missing Henry Ruggs. I, it's very disappointing. I'm the same age as Ruggs and, you know, I go out and I drink, but I, I just wish he had just called a call for someone to pick him up or, or someone else drive. It's just never should have happened. And uh, also the, the young uh, woman that lost her life, um, just condolences to her family for that too as well. We've got to take both into consideration. I mean, I I'm not going to get too much into that because it's, you know, it's a Colts video, but, and then the Jaguars. So I'm really excited for that Colts Bucks game. The Bucks should be full strength as well. Like AB has been practicing. Gronk has been, he missed Saturday's practice, but like that's because they've, just to give them that day at rest. And Gronk practice in the middle of the week anyway. So they should be at full strength. They're relatively close to it. The Colts should be near full strength. So it's going to be a good game. It's in Indy. I don't know how that is how that's not a primetime game. I mean, the Colts against the Bucks. But hey, it's whatever. But yeah, for, for this game though, 
the def- the it was the defense, bro. Like being real with you, it was it was the defense that. Well, besides John the Taylor, well, like the defense is, was big time. I mean, Josh Allen threw two picks. Uh, he got sacked once. Uh, who was it? Quiddy Pay, I believe. Uh, actually forced a fumble on that. Quiddy Pay has been the best rookie uh, defensively, at least if we're going off of um. Uh, Pro Football Focus ranked him as number one. But like Carson Wentz only threw 20 passes in this game, completed 11 of them, which obviously is not that great. Uh, had a touchdown, which was Taylor, of course. And the Colts, could, I just, it brings me back to the fact that, like, could you imagine Andrew Luck? <laughs> like, I know that's the past, but we have a great defense and great O line. We've got two good running backs, three good running backs if you count Mac. Jordan Wilkins, I don't, I believe he was signed with Jacksonville practice squad, but. We've got Frank Reich, who we know is a service capable head coach. I mean, offensive coordinator for the, the Super Bowl Eagles. It's going to come down to Carson Wentz. We've seen great Carson Wentz this season, and we've seen bad Carson Wentz this season. But rel- relatively speaking, he has been a good quarterback. And I do have faith in Wentz. I, I just I don't know if he can be the difference maker because obviously he needs to get us to the playoffs. We can't really talk about playoffs unless we're in the playoffs. I hope we make the playoffs, but if we do get to the playoffs and we go up against some of these best, the better teams that are going to really just game plan for Taylor, can Carson Wentz beat them? Because we've got Michael Pittman Jr., who did not have a good game because he was shot up by Tredavious White, obviously. He, had, he actually had a, he had a great catch in that first drive, I remember. We get two catches for, like, I don't know how many yards, but I just hope that we're able to – to continue to put up points is the biggest thing because our defense, we know how elite it is. I mean, second in turnovers, and it might even be first after this game, probably still second behind the Bills, of course. Like the defensive game against the Ravens really that that hurt, but we, we weren't full strength in that game. But I just feel like the Colts, it's gonna come down to Carson Wentz. I mean, we came to the season and we said it's Carson Wentz or bust. I mean, if Carson Wentz is not elite and he can't be a game manager, like we we traded. We traded a decent amount. Like we basically traded a first round pick and a second round, whatever the hell we traded for Carson Wentz. He doesn't have that many weapons to throw to. I mean, Zach Pascal's okay. He's got Michael Pittman who is breaking out, of course. Like Moelle Cox, like Jack Doyle, Kyle Granson's okay. Paris Campbell is never on the field. I wish he was because he's a great receiver. Uh, who else am I missing? That's T.Y. Hilton, of course. Um, T.Y. Hilton does make an impact. Well, he sees like a couple times. He only saw two targets, caught them both. One of them was a huge catch. I mean, obviously, it's just not the T.Y. Hilton of a thousand yard receiver, T.Y. Hilton. So it's going to come down to the run game. The Colts are a run first team. They first force turnovers. But what's going to happen against them? Uh, well, to this point, do I have any right to say like what's going to happen against the Bucks run defense? Because the Bills were the number, they're the number one de- ranked defense, even against the run in the path. They're number one in everything. And Jonathan Taylor just, he rushed for 32 times for 185 yards, four touchdowns, and a receiving touchdown. Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in football. He should be in the MVP conversation. He is the most valuable player. No, I don't, I can't see. He's not more valuable than some of these quarterbacks. But he, so that kind of contradicts my point. But still, MVP, he's so good and he's really valuable. But because he's a running back, that's going to hinder it. Because I can't say he's more valuable to the Colts than, than some of these elite wide receivers, or excuse me, these elite quarterbacks. Like, you know, like Matthew Stafford, for example. Like, who's more valuable, Matthew Stafford to the Rams or Jonathan Taylor to us? You guys can let me know. I mean, I mean, it's a Colts channel, but um, yeah, have a good day, guys. Joy Swaggy. Peace.